Um, actually, I'm not going to talk about consumers at all. I think we had enough about consumer, and I'm not a consumer, I'm a person. You are a person, we're all people. And some have been kids, some have kids. Uh, and kids born today have a life, life expectancy for about 100 years. So I think that's why it's highly relevant to look at the future. I loved your presentation. It's really persuasive. At the same time, it gives me a complete hangover because I don't want to be manipulated with. Think about it of falling in love. Do you want to be falling in love with this Don Zhuang who's manipulating you around? Or do you want real love? <laughs> so I think, I think that's a serious choice. And I think the consumer is going to, or people are going to stand there and um, I'll just give you a new figure that came out in, in Denmark, and it's actually people living north of Copenhagen, they live 10 years longer than people living south of Copenhagen. And the only real difference is what they eat and how much they exercise. So it is the new A and B team, and, and in that sense, I think we will see a counter lash if we are manipulated to the extent that we die, and life expectancy is shrinking uh, yet again. Also, we had the Unilever message yesterday, which was very clear about needing six planets for doubling growth. Uh, that as well has to be handled. I spent one and a half years working for IKEA, and they talk about that it's great with all the Chinese and the Indian people coming. The only challenge is that then we need two planets uh, to have just the IKEA furniture. So they're talking about the big crossroad projects. Uh, we spoke about it uh, last night that maybe the governments, they are only in for a very short term. And actually it's a big corporation that are truly global and in it for the long term. So there's a big responsibility lying on your shoulder, especially when you hear how stupid we are as individuals, which we are. Which reminds me of another situation um, just previously where I was stopped being on my mobile phone in my car, which was really irritating. Anyway, I got a file, and in Denmark we lose points. No, no, we got points. I got three points. I can have nine, and then I lose it. Anyway, I got my three points, and I was really angry, obviously phoning my friend to tell. I put down the phone, and my phone rings again. I pick it up, and it's the police saying, Lisa, we told you not to speak on your mobile phone. <laughs> and I thought that was a, a very uh, clever way of following up on their consumer. Anyway, future studies is very much about uh, looking into the future and then taking the first few steps. And I think in the next 10 years we will see it's not about pushing people as they were lemons, but try to take a step back and see how can we get people to profit and the planets to profit. And uh, just looking at you guys, now you've been sitting through two, almost three presentations without a break. That's really bad, especially male children. If they sit still for more than 20 minutes, their brain shuts down. So, so right now, you're probably not listening at all. So, so please stand up with me for a moment. Try to, to reach the floor of the, the, the ceiling. Yeah, try to move that way and then just tap each other a little bit on the back. You know, we, it, this is a people presentation. Like this, this way, please. Not too hard, just, you know, just, just to wake up a little bit. And, and then try to reach the floor. Yeah. Shake your body, turn around this way. Thank you. Okay, so now I hope you can stay awake for, for the next 30 minutes or so, which is uh, my presentation. Um, but again, taking people serious is the main point if you forget everything else. I'll talk a little bit about the market situation, and I will talk a little bit about people. And then it's up to you for these next 30 minutes to leave your professional code outside a little bit. Try to be people with me and keep that feeling when you go back into your next concept development mode. Because I think that's really where the blind spot is. It's thinking consumer, thinking about numbers, thinking about manipulation. Sometimes it's about love, it's about loving people. So, so stay with me on that for a little bit. I love taboos. 
which is another way of talking about the irrationality of people. And um, I had this old PNG example of the Tempax, which was an immediate sales success for 50% of the population, women, who had never asked for tampons. Tam uh, tampons. Uh, having female period was a big, big taboo that nobody talked about. In the first notes in the boxes of Tempax, there was a little a note saying, my box of Tempax is empty, could you please hand me another one, which you could give at the pharmacist, uh, because it was such an embarrassment. And, and those taboos are really interesting in tapping into the human potential. And I will come into the three taboos that we see in the future. Just to give you an example, we just talked about globesity, that now there are more overweight than underweight people on this planet. Uh, with IKEA, we are now made love seats. They're supposed to be that you can play on the computer together, two people. That's the story. The reality is that people have the size of two people, and we need one person to be able to sit there. But if we call it the chair for the fat guy, nobody's going to buy it, right? So love seats. So, so that kind of, of, of taboos are emerging. The good news is that the market is growing a lot. I put plugged in my own birthday, which is the 23rd of June, 1970. And I think it's the great visualization to see how many people have actually come into this planet and how many people we're going to be in the next few years. And as I said, around sustainability, the big challenge is to exploit this market to make everybody happy and uh, everybody grow and prosper. And that just challenged the mindset that we had until now. So I think we're going to look back and we're really going to see a huge change of paradigm. Taboo number one is that, in fact, we have enough stuff in the industrialized world. You actually said it very well with your jam cans. We don't want all that yet. Six is enough, you know. And, and looking at, at the modern way of working, you know, he has one computer, he has a little bit of food, we only need three meals a day, right? And um, so, 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 in a sense, we have reached this added value peak long ago, and people realize that. So, what do we do? Well, I think if you want to have success in the future, you need to know why you are in the market. We actually talk about this digital generation, the generation Y. They want to know why are you here? Why, are you, why, why would the world miss you if you are not here? You know the law of Archimedes of lifting big problems and challenges? The what? It's impossible unless you have the little rock of the why lying underneath. Then you can lift almost any challenge. So the next generation will be asking you why all the time. Why are you doing this to me? And now I have the uh, funny Colgate dental flush advertisement because I think they, they actually managed to say why. Why do we need us, them? Because if people have something in their teeth, maybe look in each other's teeth and make a smile, you know, you will focus on the black spot completely. But likewise, uh, with, the, with the dinosaur we saw in the corner, these guys has six fingers on one and there's an arm coming from nowhere. And we don't see that. We are completely focusing on what's wrong with the teeth. So I guess that's a great value proposition. The actual dental flush, we don't care about that. But we do care that people notice nothing else but the black spot on our tooth. So that's really understanding the why am I important to you. We heard from Unilever that soap well, is that important? Yes, it is actually quite important. It can reduce child mortality by 67%. That's something good then, isn't it? Then uh, I think there's a very good reason to explain to your kids when you come home, well, I've been selling soap to the world, I'll tell you why. And then why should we have brands? There's an interesting survey coming out on that, showing that if you go to a job interview, and you know the, young, the youth unemployment is huge in Spain, if you actually go to a job interview in a suit with a brand, you have a 47% extra likelihood to get the job. 
So that's a good reason to scale up when, when you go shopping instead of scaling down, I guess. And also they found out that people were actually giving 53% more for charity if people collecting the money was wearing this, in this case, Hilfiger suit and shirts. So, so in that sense, I think it's a very good idea to wear a brand. Also glasses, by the way, it makes you seem 30% more clever than you are to people. Why Coca-Cola? Well, this came out three days ago. And I think it really goes to show that we are in a transition where they really need to say, why am I in the world? Here, they have now put vendor machines up, which allows Indians and Pakistanis to talk to each other. Is the sound on? Where is the sound? It's not there? Is there no sound? <laughs> But I think still the next best, best thing you were saying before, do you think there will be Coca-Cola in 20 years? Well, I don't know. I don't know if they're very good at making peace in the world and distributing medication around. Maybe we will string, still drink our Coca-Cola. I know for sure it was the only thing I felt like drinking after my red wine yesterday when I woke up, um, which is a good indicator as well that it might survive a little longer. So. We have this generation of people asking why. The young generation, maybe below 24 years, and there is a very uh, different approach now. It's about what gives me value, what is important. We've seen Airbnb, which is actually an exchange service where you can rent other people's houses, growing as the biggest growing company in the state last year. And basically, I have these four kids. I want to go to New York. Of course, I rent a house where they also have four kids, four bedrooms. I borrow their car. I can even borrow their dog and buy treats for them. And uh, I'm not worried that they will, I will spill something in a nice hotel and I won't feel at home. It's plug and play, it's instant happiness, and it's at a completely different rate. So of course, it's far more suitable than this hotel business where you are all reaching a common uh, factor. When I go away with my boyfriend, I choose to stay in a tree somewhere exotic, or I do something else crazy, which Airbnb also allows me to do. So it's a different kind. If you look at a drilling machine and say, why do I have a drilling machine? What's the purpose of a drilling machine? Anybody? You know a drilling machine? It's, it's a hose, right? It's not, for some guys it's a drilling, but how, how much do you think a drilling machine is used in its whole product life cycle? Guess I have Danish chocolates for you as a present. Three minutes? Three, three hours? Oh, three, ti three times. Yeah, it could be three times, but it's used in an average for 10 minutes in total. Between eight and, and 10 minutes. And again, if you ask what is valuable for me, it's a hole in the wall, right? So what we see now, and that becomes interesting for you with the casino and the local community supermarket is that people in the next year, 10 years, and it's already happening in Spain due to the crisis, will start helping each other. They will start using modern technology to access. It's much more important to access the valuable thing that can make you rich rather than actually owning the drilling machine yourself. That will only put up stuff that won't make you be able to move around in your house. So using modern technology, we sit at Soho up there, which is a uh, hundred small business, small and medium sized businesses sitting together. We have the best interior decorator. We have the best organic food in our cantina. We have the best meeting facilities. Come and look us up if you like. And I don't have to do any of that. I can just scale up and down. I even have a 3D printer. I can access all that. I don't have to own it, I don't have to control it. It's just an expenditure for me if I have to. So, so that kind of valuable 
shortcuts is going to be extremely important in a world that is in a finance crisis. And this is not only the industrialized world, the developing countries, they are using this shortcut as well, big way. Um, right now, um, well, TaskRabbit is where you can actually uh, give services for each other. It's growing very quickly in the UK now. Do you know what service people are asking most for, for help for? Anybody? Excuse me? Cooking? You will have a chocolate for trying. It's actually putting IKEA furniture together. So that's, uh, that's uh, something people really need. TaskRabbit puts you in touch with friendly, reliable neighbors who can help you get just about anything you need done and put some free time back in your day. TaskRabbit.com. Do more, live more, be more. Right now, uh, we are working on a project which will make it safe to hitchhike. You know, 97% of people, they sit alone in the car. You saw the traffic jam in Madrid, maybe last night or every day. And, and it's, it's crazy, isn't it? Uh, so you can use modern technology and pattern recognition just to put out, and you, I will be told, oh, he's actually a friend of mine via this person, and he actually has a great rating, and he's also a good driver, and I can just get a lift. So why bother, you know, looking for parking myself? Uh, also, in terms of the cars, well, a car, average car is used less than one hour a day. Why can't I just leave it with friends who need it while I don't use it and I'm sitting in my office anyway? That kind of transition are happening right now. The first time I came across it was at Rodeo Drive in Los Angeles where I saw this infinite closet. What they do there is that they give women dresses, Gucci dresses, which are normally uh, 10,000 euros. You can get it for 700 euros just for one night but you only need a nice dress like that for one night. And at the same time, you get a contract that nobody else in the state of California is wearing this dress. You get a bag to go with it, you get the shoes, you do your party, you look great, and then you deliver it back to this infinite closet the next day. It's perfect, I mean, because when is it valuable to you? When you're wearing it, not when you have all these uh, high heels in the closet. And uh, the movie stars right now, they're stepping in and out all the time, and it's becoming really not status-like to go and have all that stuff for yourself. To a bus, and offer your empty seats in real time to potential riders along your route, extending the reach and frequency of public transport options for commuters. Anyone can get a ride using a mobile phone or online and receive the information they need to travel in confidence. A Vago guides the driver to a convenient pickup point and provides the rider with a one-time PIN code as the driver approaches. So what does it matter to people? Well, it means that I become a service provider. It's not just shops anymore. The lines between who are the shops and who are the shoppers, they're disappearing. I'm also supplying stuff. When I go to the supermarket, I might well as well buy the most expensive rubber boots because I know that I will resell them on trend sale maybe next year or when the summer comes because I don't want them to take up too much room. So it can make me upscale things because I see it all as an investment, a flow. And it's also extremely... How many of you have been to the States? You know how service-minded people are? They're extremely service-minded because they live off their tips, right? <laughs> That's a, a, a big reason anyway. And it's likewise, our future value, our future brand as people will be based on how is our reputation. If we want a job in the future, companies will look into how has Lisa been dealing with others? Did she leave the house in New York okay? Or you know, is she a good driver? You will look at all these parameters when hiring somebody. And if they don't have a digital footprint, then you will be really curious about that as well. So you can't stay out of this system. And somehow you, are, you, are, you have to go in here and you have to start in this new economy. You have to start to build your reputation. In terms of businesses, 
It's no longer just Unilever. I'm going to follow you personally. I'm going to look at your digital footprints. What decisions did you make? What did you say at this exact conference? So everybody is going to be held far more accountable in the future. We won't be able to hide behind brands. We are all individual brands, if you like. So that's a taboo number two. People are not going to look so much as to what education did I get? You will actually just go and say, okay, we have Lisa as a speaker. What exactly has she been doing the last three months? And you might even have filmed it with your great cameras. So uh, you have actually tracked me in the sh shops. You have seen me picking up my kit. You have seen my driving style. And we will have a little uh, story about me before I even arrive. And uh, what does it mean? Well, we have for a long time been very uh, recession-like. We don't want a new car. We want a small car. We don't want to have a nice house. We want to, you know, save money. Well, if this new economy really takes off, in order to have a good reputation, I've just been out buying the best cleaning materials at all because I had some people staying while there was a European song contest in Malmö last weekend. So they had this whole uh, family coming. And I bought completely new cleaning liquid because they have to clean the house and I want it to look cool. I bought completely new linen. I bought, I, I mean, I really pimped my house, right? I haven't done that for ages, but suddenly I had to look at being a provider of a service. And they see that all the time, also in terms of the cars. Of course, you'd rather have a lift with a nice cabriolet with the hot music rather than this old, not too sure car to drive around in. So it is also a possibility. But here you have to think of casino and the likes uh, uh, going into these local communities as one of the many areas. You will also have a new, we have in, in Denmark right now, we have the small casinos taking on banking, local banking, because all the banks are closing their branches and we still have old people who would like to have some help with their accounts. So that's now happening in the local store. More people are using their bicycles. So we're now getting bike through supermarkets where you can get your stuff on the bike. So, 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 so these small supermarkets, every 200 meters on the corner, they will start creating small villages in the big cities, if you like. So you start organizing yourself around the local community. Around 70% of people now have the chance to work from home some part of the week. So we will be more oriented around our home. We looked at another presentation saying how powerful kids are in the choices of parents. They choose more or less 70%. We now see that parents move to the neighborhoods which are nicer to children, not where their jobs are. So there's a big transition towards this local community. So I, I think your presentations were very interesting and I think you have a lot of work ahead in terms of really going into dialogue with these local uh, community, understanding the people and the bus that is going on. The challenge is that you force them into these big supermarkets and you think about them as shoppers, so you have these blind spots of what is actually happening outside on the streets right now. So let's have a look at people. I found one with the Google glasses. Uh, what I think is interesting is that we now see in that all the young people are completely digital. They are online all the time. So I don't understand that you even make the differ about being offline and online and where are you. That's crazy. People below 24, they are online to the extent they don't want a driving license anymore because when they drive, they are fined like me, you know, because the machine beeps. So they simply don't want to go offline. They say, well, when I'm online, I'm actually already there. Where am I supposed to go? That's one argument. And, and, and then they just don't want to say, waste the time being offline. And then, of course, they're looking forward to these Google cars, uh, dri oh, sorry, these driverless cars that are coming now. They have just been legalized in California. They are already driving in Australia, and they have no driver. And that is going to be a very interesting time for you as well, because here, we will hang around in our car. Before we were stuck, 97% looking out of the windscreen, touching the wheel. That's finished within two or three years. That's going to be gone. I just took a little video clip with you for the driverless car. Hi, this is Lisa. Hi, 
the brownie? Yeah. Oh my god. I'm gonna trip and stuff. Come here. Oh snap! What just happened? So let me give you a little quiz, because this is a survey that has just come out, and it actually has looked at people, and. What makes them succeed? What makes people succeed? And that is in terms of wealth. What does it take to be rich? What does it take to have a great job? What does it take for people to see themselves as having a great life, as being happy? And then you get long-lasting relationships. I don't know if you're interested in that, but that's something you get anyway. So, okay, you have three choices. A, is it a high? intelligence and emotional intelligence? B, is it a large amount of self-control? Or C, is it positive psychology? Do you understand the three options? Okay, I will count to three, and on three, you say the letter that you think is right. I still have some chocolate left, okay? One, two, three, now. Did everybody say C? Everybody? No, you said something else? The man with the tie? What did you say? C as well. And who said B? Yes! Great! I need to show you these chocolates because it's actually the most sold piece of chocolate in Denmark. It's completely irrational, it's full of caramel. The chocolate quality stinks, it's really, really bad. And they have tried to export this chocolate many times, it doesn't work. But the price elasticity is completely indifferent. You can take one euro, you can take 10 cents, it doesn't matter. People buy it. We have made psychological tests on how people eat this turtle, you know. And um, I was really happy, you know, using it as a reward to people who are saying the right thing. Like you. And uh, I, I went to a shipping company with these and the good energy went out of the audience. They went stiff, cold, felt bad, and, oh, can I just borrow it again? And, and it turned out they had their boss, uh, and he actually bought this turtle to people who hadn't performed very well. So if you didn't have the proper numbers, it would be on your desk when you came back from lunch, and you knew you had a serious discussion with the boss. And if it was lying upside down, you were fired. So I understood why they had a problematic relationship to the turtle. But anyway, for you, it's a reward. Congratulations. Um, so anyway, the right answer is a large amount of self-control. And it really comes into the rationality of our previous speaker, because this is a result stemming from this survey, which was four-year-old kids. You had a researcher leaving them with a marshmallow, saying, now I will leave the room for 15 minutes. If you hadn't, haven't eaten this marshmallow for these 15 minutes, I will give you another one. And the kids are sitting there, you know, and they can't help themselves. We are irrational people, so we eat the marshmallow, right? And a little percentage of these kids, they manage to look at their marshmallow and not eating it for 15 minutes. And looking at them as adults, they had the self-control which is what it takes to succeed in the industrialized world, because it's about saying no. It's about not being manipulated. It's about saying no to this uh, low interest loan so you can go on holiday with your family and you almost have to pay back nothing. Then you are not becoming, if you say no to all these loans, you will become rich, you know. You know about Spain, yeah. They should have said no long ago. Anyway. If you get a great job, it's the same, you know, you have to train, you have to work. Uh, it's about focusing, getting the longer education, not going out partying too much. The long relationship, likewise, you know, if you want to have a long relationship, it's about saying no uh, to a lot of other options. And uh, if in terms of your health, 
Of course, it's about saying no to 99% of what you see in the supermarket, or you have this obesity uh, issue. So, um, I said before, 80% of our health expenditure now is on lifestyle diseases. And we have all these diets, and you showed it so well on the Friday, you bulge out because you've been using all your willpower all week and you have nothing left, you're completely depleted. Especially people with diabetes, they have even lower blood sugar levels. They can't control themselves. So um, we have this situation where I'll say taboo number three is that the willpower is cancelled. The most stupid thing that we can say to ourselves as people is that we are rational, is that we can control ourselves. The first thing to do is to say, well, we are still very much like in the hunter-gatherer society. If there is a ball of candy in front of me, I will eat it. And people are starting to realize that. And that means they might not come in your supermarket because they know they will be manipulated with. They know it's bad for them, so they know that the best diet they can do is maybe coming down in their trusted casino where he's only giving them the bag that they asked for uh, when they were full and not hungry, and, and so forth. So, so we are moving in to a different kind of people who are taking over the self-control. How are they doing that? Through body hacking. We think body hacking is going to be the big Christmas present in 2015. It's going to be the big blockbuster. We see that in Silicon Valley, people are investing heavily in this. What is it? Well, it's a little jewelry. You have it around your neck, and it films everything you do. It films how much you sleep, what you eat, how, the speed of your eating, how warm is your house. Maybe you could throw some kilos reducing the temperature in your house by, I don't know, three degrees, and you would also save some money on your accounts. And so it basically, how many of you use a smartphone for running? Quite a few of you. How many are posting it on, on Facebook? Yeah, so you are the fast runners. Anyway, um, and, and when you go running and you have forgotten your, your smartphone, you will go back and pick it up because it's almost like you didn't run if you didn't bring it and if you didn't track it. This is what we're going to see, but it's on all parameters. It will show me whether it's good to have my job or what clients am I stressing with, what people am I feeling with. I will type in, I need to eat fish twice a week, and by the end of the week, I will get a sweet reminder. You know, Lisa, you put up these goals for yourself, and you will have constant feedback, optimizing, individualizing. Here you will really look into my story. So what we get now is a digital stick, or like when you take a car, you have a GPS telling you where to go. We will start using that for the humans. So it's combining all the information about you, and you're willing to share it to trusted advisors, like your doctor, maybe with your insurance company, if you, they will give you a lower policy if you actually show them that you do your 10 steps of walking and you have your fist twice a week or whatever. But they will be very hard to target. So if you think it's hard now to meet people, just wait and see. And uh, it's, it's not just giving us information with smileys. It's interacting with us. It's going to be like a game where you all the time are challenging yourself so you get enough friction to develop and move.
but you get the idea, right? Um, and, and next time I meet you guys, we're not sitting with this translator kit, we will sit with the Google Glasses. And what they can do, despite, uh, besides from translating, they can also translate uh, finger hands language for deaf people. So, so we can actually uh, invite people who cannot hear anything and they can communicate with us. Uh, and uh, these Google Glasses, they were just introduced at the big fashion week in New York and all the models were wearing them. So it's going to be very interesting to see your people coming with these on, getting all the layers of information and getting all the advice as they move down the aisles. So where we are tracking to is this with the body hacking that we are taking. We know that we need to be ma manipulated because we don't have the willpower. We acknowledge that. And we take on this live GPS to, to navigate. And, and Google is moving into this market as well. Fashion Week is very important for New York City. Lots of people come in from all over the world, and it's just this incredible moment of total energy. to turn your head and tell your neighbor, are you going to let yourself be body hacked? In two years time, are you going to do it or are you going to say, no, no, that's not for me? Just say yes and no and I'll keep you up on it in two years time. Just, and just say briefly why to your neighbor. Will you use it? Tell each other? No? If you cannot get an insurance if you don't do it? Mm -hmm. And if all the others are doing it, we have the hoard effect. Everybody's being so efficient with themselves and their time. Can you really slack around like that with no willpower, being able to be manipulated around by supermarkets and advertisers? You better get some body hacking soon. <laughs> okay, I just want, would like to know how many said yes? And how many said no? The rest? Yeah, so it's more or less 50-50. Well, look back in two years, right? Because it's not just measuring, it's really monitoring. And why it's important is when you ask people what they do, there's one reality compared to what is true. So we have this interesting survey where we ask people how much sugar and candy they eat, and then we compare it with what is actually sold, and we see that 40,000 tons of sugar and candy is going missing just in little Denmark in one year. So there's really a big gap between what people say and what they do. So that's gonna be so last year that people were asked about their life they are just measured all the time. Everything is recorded. And how can you benefit? Well, for instance, my partner, Anne, she got this uh, eco drive gear, which is a kind of, of driving hacking. And it actually told her that she drives really bad, like a two out of 10. And she said, had my husband told me that, you know, I would have hit him. But since it's a machine and it's actually giving me advice on how to become a better driver, it's okay. She's now on a six. so. So um, it's just to, to, to say that, of course, we will do it. And I was supposed to talk about my story, and we love my story. We love storytelling, but it has to be related to me. What does it mean to me? I think a great example is uh, this shopping center, which allow girls to take pictures of themselves in the clothes. Instead of using fashion models, they use themselves and they share it with friends.
and this one has just come out, and it just uh, communicates with your wavelengths. So if you've been really stressed at work, it's an anti-stress. It will actually, on your smartphone, tell you, now it's time for five minutes break, or now it's time to listen to some music, and it will come with suggestions. And right now, the, the evidence is that it actually is a good uh, way of, of combating stress, for instance, and you can actually work far more efficient. And it will also tell you, you know, to turn off your phone and, and to stay focused. So it's helping us to be better people. That's the idea. So why do we want to do this? Because we want to be transformed. We don't just want to have stories. We don't just want to be my story. We want to be transformed. And the best example I've seen on that lately, it's actually the Refugee Museum in The Hague. Instead of having posters of information, of telling people about how many refugees there are in the world, when you get in there, they take away your identity papers and you have to struggle all the way through, or you lose your nationality, you lose all your rights, you really have the feeling that I have nothing. When you stand on top of the roof at the end, they then have people around other rooftops, and you really feel, oh, this is how it must feel to be a refugee. And then it's about getting your papers back. Likewise, I just went to a conference with Novartis, who makes these diabetes products, and they have a big problem getting their staff to realize what are we actually producing. They have years of the launches, year of the launches. This time, they, they played around with the blood sugar level of people. They got them really angry. Then they gave them a kick. Then they got them in another mode. So they could actually feel what is the medication actually doing to people. We want to be transformed. Not just my story, but the next step. So, what do you remember? That's another good thing to ask yourself or your kids when they're back from school. What did you remember from today? Because then you remember. I look at the market, I look at people. We are going from product bulimia to this focus on resource efficiency. We have to do it for the planet, but we will do it as well as individuals. Maybe not the 40 plus, but at least the 24 and below, the digital generation, they will use it to access anything they need, all the variables they need. So it's moving from consumption that you want to make a good investment. What will my own market value be from entering in this line? We're moving from believing that we have a willpower, that we can actually manage to go on a diet and keep it, to asking for a digital stick, asking for body hacking. We're going from monitoring to measuring, to actually knowing rather than asking and guessing. And we're moving from just inspiration and posters and information overload to actual transformation. And we're moving from storytelling to my story. This takes one minute, so I don't know if we should take it. Is it okay with you guys? It's a very last, it's just another survey shows, we have always thought that it's only as a child you have brain cells. Neurosurgeons have found out we get new brain cells every day. So that's really the good news of the day. The bad news is if you do what you always do, they will die. They don't want to join you. So if you want your new brain cells to live, you have to start experimenting. You have to go somewhere, you have to stink at it, being bad at it, you have to move somewhere. Uh, where you haven't been before, then these new brain cells that you had today, they will survive, taking on these new tasks and projects. This is really, really interesting. And that's why we believe that the future generation, they will have five different careers in a lifetime. So really institutionalizing this, experimenting. And I know the only one who likes change is the wet baby. That's hard to translate, but, um, but nevertheless, Spending time of, on experimenting is the way of staying young.
creating the future, it's about asking the why, what is the purpose, and then going from that, looking outside in a little bit, and then uh, remember to help each other. I will show you a very little clip from China, a sister and a brother helping each other. And if you are hungry to look at future trends, I have the presentation uh, on how you create the future for yourself on this link. A real gentleman. Thank you. Bueno, Lisa, muchísimas gracias por tu visión. Should I put the translating gear on? Mm, uh, okay. I think it's not necessary because we, yeah. we need to close. Yeah. Um, estamos seguros, uh, we are sure that everything is going to change very soon. Estamos en el medio del cambio, lo que pasa es que eh, nosotros desafortunadamente nos ponemos los trajes, venimos a, estamos en empresas, como dice Gary Hamel, estamos... I need my Google Glasses. Lo hago en español primero. Eh, la, la disrupción, la, lo que tenemos hoy es que mucha gente trabaja en empresas muy grandes, trabajan en empresas que están usando hoy tecnología del siglo XXI, Toda esta tecnología la están empezando a experimentar con procesos del siglo XX y con jefes del siglo XIX. Y es un poco lo que pasa, lo hemos visto. Entonces, es difícil de aceptar en el, el 50% de tu parte de vida, que es el trabajo, todo esto que está ocurriendo. Solo pasa con pequeñas compañías muy innovadoras o gente muy, muy diferente. Pero muchísimas gracias por tu, por tu visión. Vamos a valorar la ponencia de Elisa, por favor.